Hello Bond fans! So obviously this week marked the release of the Bond 50 Blu-ray box set. And obviously as an ardent and passionate fan I went out and grabbed myself a copy. Despite already having this collection on video, on Special Edition DVD, on Ultimate Edition DVD, and even some of them on Blu-ray previously. I just, I can't get enough of this series. My first foray into Bond on home video was in like 1999 or something when they were on these VHSs in this particular series. I know that Bond had been released before on videotape, like probably countless times, but this particular series was the one that got me started on Bond. A lot of these tapes were like the first format I ever saw some of these films on, and at the time they were great, they were the bee's knees. I loved the whole collecting thing, I mean it was so cool, to when you connected them all up they made that awesome image of all the Bonds, and there was the fire in the background and the Lotus was there, and there was a your Andrews, and it, it was so cool to see them all kind of build up because I was building this collection over like months, and so it was really cool to see them slot together. Most of the cover art for the series was really cool too, and I've always loved how they managed to make the man with the golden gun look like some kind of terrifying, horrific film. Like, look how terrified Bond is on that front cover. I don't even know what those spike things are. It's just like a, it's just a total misrepresentation of the film, but it looks really cool. I really wore these videos out. I mean, I would watch them over and over and over again. I couldn't get enough of them. I thought, oh my god, this is amazing. I don't have to wait for Bond to come on TV anymore. I have them on video. This is perfect. I'm never going to need to buy them again because they're there. It's great. It's wonderful. And then the DVDs came out and I tossed the videos aside. These DVDs were awesome. There was something so cool at the time about having these films on DVD. They had never looked better at home. Even on TV they never looked as good as this. And my god, the extras. The extras were the best thing about these DVDs. This making of documentaries narrated by Patrick McNee are just excellent. They are like the definitive accounts on the making of these films. They're so engaging and I've watched them all like, well, multiple times and they're still interesting. They're still entertaining. They're just awesome. I also really loved how each film had its own personally styled DVD menu. I know it's not necessarily a big thing, but it's just so cool that they went to the effort to do this. Even if the whole activate thing got a bit annoying after a while. Like, yeah, I put the DVD in, I want to watch this film. Just cut to the chase. Why do I need to activate just to get to the friggin' menu? Though I guess the DVDs did come with cool little booklets to pass the time while waiting for the menus to load. And hey, look! Those spiky things from Amanda Golden Gun video cover have moved to the Live and Let Die cover. Seriously, are they some kind of plant? And what the heck is up with more on the octopusy cover? They airbrushed him to hell, his hair looks like a helmet! So here we go, these special edition DVDs are obviously gonna be the definitive way to watch these films for generations to come. Oh, hello Ultimate Edition DVD! Yes, the films were re-released on DVD, and as an ardent and, I guess, well, stupid fan, I greedily bought them up. These particular DVDs were two discs per film, and they were stacked with bonus features. I mean, I, I thought the extras on the previous DVDs were good, but this collection had everything from the previous versions, plus a whole load of uh, archive programs and featurettes, and even some new stuff, like uh, interviews with James Brolin on how he nearly got cast as Bond in Octopussy. They even have a couple of screen tests here. PLUS they have deleted scenes on some of the films, and best of all, for the first time on UK home video, GoldenEye and Tomorrow Never Dies were uncut, meaning we finally got to see Bond stamp on that guy's head and see Xenia headbutt Natalia, WOOHOO! The artwork was mostly great too, they all came with booklets and it was all very lovely, but does anyone else hate that picture of Connery? I mean, look, they've used it on a few different Thunderball covers now, and I just, I don't know why, I mean, it looks like he's mid-yawn, his eyes are half open. But anyway, surely now this was going to be the definitive Bond collection for the ages. And now we're here, the Bond 50 Blu-ray box set. The first time all 22 Bond films have been released on Blu-ray. So, is this the definitive Bond at home movie collection? Well, the films never looked this good, that's for sure, especially the early Connery films. I mean, they look like they were shot yesterday. The quality is so good. The extras are awesome too, but there's nothing new. It's all ported over from previous discs, and we still lose out on a couple of extras from the Dine of the Day special edition, which is a shame. That friggin' inside Dine of the Day feature, it was more entertaining than the film itself. 
And of course, as you're probably already aware, we get a really shitty bonus disc. And when I say shitty, I mean absolutely, totally, abominably offensive. Like, on the back page of the packaging for this set, the synopsis for this bonus disc takes up like a third of the packaging and you think it'd be something kind of special from that? And when I first heard about this online and they described the being Bond feature, I was like, wow, okay, cool. I kind of thought maybe they'd have gotten new interviews with most of the Bonds and it was going to be like a good 40 minute long documentary or something and they were all going to go around and they were all going to talk about all the other incarnations, all the other actors, and how they feel about the role, how they interpreted it. But no, what we get is three minutes of sound bites called from other, better documentaries from this set. The designing Bond feature at two is such a wasted opportunity. It's like four minutes long and it's such fluff. I mean, I went to that exhibit at the Barbican where they filmed this particular feature and there was a wealth of Bond props and costumes and things. That, I, mean, I mean, they could have talked about almost anything. I mean, and they could have tried not to cover the same material from other documentaries, but it was just, it just ends up being so underwhelming. There's also some Skyfall vlogs, but you can see those on YouTube for free anyway. And the world of Bond thing is just stupid. It's just a montage of villains and gadgets and things like that, but what's the point? I can never imagine coming home, sitting down and thinking, oh yes, I must watch that villain's montage. And some reviews have said that having the tile sequences all together in one place is cool, and like it runs for an hour or whatever, but I just don't give a shit. I think this is really a case of I just wish they hadn't bothered with it at all. It feels like they just needed an extra disc in the packaging so there'd be a 24th disc slot, so then it's all even and symmetrical and that. The set also comes with this kind of weird slot at the back, like it's here, 2012, so Skyfall, fair enough, space reserved for Skyfall, great, it's the Bond 50 Blu-ray box set, so it's only appropriate that it's there, but does that mean that Skyfall's gonna come without a case? Like, is it just gonna be a disc on its own, because otherwise I'm just gonna have, like, an empty Skyfall case on my shelf, and I don't want that, that's bloody mental, that's worse than a delicatessen made out of steel that isn't stainless. But bonus disc and confusing empty slot thing aside, it's a pretty comprehensive set. I mean, it's not complete. We're still missing the Inside Dine of the Day documentary from the special edition DVD and the picture-in-picture -picture commentary from that particular Blu-ray release of Casino Royale isn't there. And we all know there's an audio commentary or two and an alternative ending for Quantum of Solace out there, but they're not here, which means we'll probably get another version of that sometime soon. But these are kind of mild gripes, I guess, because for right here, right now, this box set is the ultimate way to watch the 22 two current James Bond films. And at the end of the day, it's more about how the films themselves look than how many extras are on the discs. And yeah, obviously I'm pissed off about the bonus disc, and I'm pissed off about the missing extras, and I'm annoyed that there are no really great new retrospective documentaries on the B.S. Brosnan films, like the really good Patrick Mann narrated ones on the older films, but the films themselves have never looked or sounded as good as on these discs. I mean, it's a really great set, and for this place in time, it is the definitive way to view these movies at home. I mean, I can't see myself having to buy another Bond Blu-ray for, like, well, years. <gasps> but it's Steelbook and it looks so pretty!